So in the last video, we talked about how we can generate this packing based on a given tree. And that's good, but it doesn't really help if you don't know how to fold the packing. So I did fold it in the last video, but um, I don't ever really explain how you can fold it. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to turn it into a crease pattern, like a formal crease pattern that can actually be folded. And then from there, I assume you know how to fold the rest. So I wrote out some steps you can do here. So the first step is to delete the hinges. So in this packing, I've represented the hinges as, as these blue lines. But remember, this doesn't necessarily mean valley. Um, this just means hinges. So uh, I'm going to delete them. So use the right click to delete tool. OK, and so what we're left is, with is just these um, the ridges. The next step uh, is to use the G tool. So that's the G is over, uh, I think it's this one grid fill tools, or if you're on the mod, the hotkey is G. And this one is really helpful. You just drag it across, and it'll fill in all your pleats for you. So here, I actually want, usually you want to have a mountain on the side just to get us a starting place. So let me just swap all those. And then now you're just going to use this to fill in the rest. So, um, and then make sure that your, your directions are correct. So, okay, so basically the reason why I swapped that just now is because uh, if I have a mountain crease going up this way, it's going to be very weird to have it turn into a valley on the other side. It's possible, but it's just very weird. So in normal box fleeting, it's just going to be like this. The mountain will stay mountain all the way around. And then we just fill in over here. So, um, like that. And then for this last one, we can just, you know. Okay, that's step one, or step two. Now, step three is to fix the mountain valley of the ridges. So you see um, how it's going all the way, mountain all the way through, and these these points are not flat foldable. So what's really handy is the CAMV tool in the top right. So that will tell you all the the vertices that you need to fix. Then what's also helpful is this tool over here, um, which will basically uh, you can drag it over a line and it will make it alternate mountain valley, which is exactly what we need it to do. So see how now it alternates mountain valley here. So we just do that all the way through. Yeah, this is uh, this is why we use Orihime. So see, like there is the wrong way. So I'll just change individually each one. No big deal. Uh, I don't think there's a hotkey for this one, unfortunately. Uh, we will make do. Okay. Now you notice that there's a few more vertices that are marked as pink. And that's because we're missing hinges. So oh, actually, I mean, this one is not quite a hinge. I don't know what it would be this term, but the term for this crease. But um, basically, we just need to fill those in. These ones are hinges. So um, there's a number of ways we can solve them. We can solve it like this. And then that that's one way we can solve it. Another way we can solve it, it would be to go like this over here. And that will solve it. Or we could also um, do this here, which is more work, gets thicker, but it's also a valid solution. OK? So um, and then the rest. So normally, you'll just go, you'll just drag them the closest way to the edge. And then again, we'll bring this alternating tool. And that's it. So our all our pink dots went away. So therefore, we know that we're ready to fold. So let's uh, select the whole thing, and then press F or click on this one down here. Oh, self intersection. Okay, let's fix that. Um, what happened here? Let's just delete these weird hinges. Okay, let's try again. Select the whole thing. Bruh, what? Okay. All right. So what happened here is that this flap is intersecting to this flap. Again, that's my bad. We did these hinges are kind of whack. All right. All right. Try one more time. 
Okay, so there it is. So it doesn't look like much, but you can actually, well, you could drag the things around to try to distort it a little bit, but uh, not recommended. But basically, the fact that you can see that it's a, a flat foldable thing means that we know our thing is flat foldable. So you should know how to fold this crease pattern, and then you'll have your tree that you wanted. All right? It's not too bad, right? Or the Ori human is pretty easy. So just follow the four steps and you should be good. Okay, so for homework to practice this, um, you can, these three things here that were you had for homework, you can practice turning these, if you made a packing, which you should have after watching the last video, you can turn your packing into a uh, flat foldable crease pattern. And then you should be able to fold it and have the physical model, which you can then shape or maybe don't. But either way, I hope this video helped. Um, if, if it did, you should leave a like, subscribe, whatever, and then I can make more videos to explain more stuff. Alright, so it's been a little bit of a time since we actually reviewed some of the homework that people have been diligently submitting to the design server, so I'm going to take a moment to talk about some of the, look over some of the people's submissions uh, for homework. So the last time we left off was this one uh, by Joseph Fleming from the preliminary base, I believe. All right. And then we've got the homework for grafting. So basically people are practicing their grafting and also some of the box plating stuff because it's been a little bit. Here's one from uh, Fish Hat. It's, uh, this one is very polished. I know he did some test folds and he used a nice paper and stuff, which is, you know, above the expectation. And this looks really nice. It's got, you know, the claws, really good shaping and I like the color and photo and everything's really good about this. The structure, he says, is uh, I saw the crease pattern he posted it somewhere. It's basically the same as the ostrich we did in the video. Although, as he said, uh, I think he did it first or like while I was filming it or something like that. But anyways, um, remember that uh, grafting and traditional bases, a lot of things have been done already. A lot of people think of the same thing. That just kind of happens. Um, but again, when we get to box pleating, your ideas are going to be much more unique. That's another positive about box pleading, that there's not going to be much overlap between people's designs. Uh, here's an, here's a, just a regular bird base, I think. So just the traditional bases. So this is a Millennium Falcon. No, no, nothing wrong with this. Looks very nice, good, very solid by Justin G. Um, okay, here's Flex Tape or Ultra's uh, Oryx. Now this one, he claims it's a graft, which I I see what his point is. There's a fish base with the strip down the middle, but I'm pretty sure this one was just something he designed already and then he submitted it, which is okay. But I'm just, I don't think this, um, this is not quite a graft. The the minds or the design mindset from this is not a graft. It's, it's not really a fish base with a strip. It's just, you know, a 22 and a half design. An excellent design, but it just has two, happens to have two ravagers on the side. So that's really cool anyways. And what he mentions here about uh, 22 and a half references outside of grids. So what he means by that is when we did our ostrich, remember we calculated, we did some proportions and stuff, and we found that the graft ratio needs to be on one fifth of the paper. So that's a grid reference. A 22 and a half reference is, um, Instead of finding like a rational number, like one fifth, you find it's it's going to get end up with irrational numbers like um, one over square root of two or something like that. And to find that, you use these angle bisectors like this blue line here. So I'm I know the basics of this, but I'm not super qualified. I don't I don't do a lot of twenty two and a half. So I'm afraid I might not be able to teach this um, as effectively as someone else might can. So I might have to decline that. Here's um, another existing design, so I know this is a really old one from Simon, but it exemplifies the concept pretty well. So, you know, he's got a fish base, and he wanted some fins, fin details on the seahorse, so he grafted it on here. It also made the tail longer, which allows for a little bit more shaping, so that's a great use, very straightforward use of grafting. Uh, hi, Omar, how are you doing, man? This is Chris, who's been on the rise with his designs. Great job, Chris, he's on the grind. This is his chicken, so he's got some color changes. And he's also got toes uh, on a bird base. So remember that bird bases are pretty good for birds like this. Excellent use, very, very solid use of grafting. And color change too. This is like his third fold of it or something by Eternal Origamis. I think this was in the previous homework submission. Yeah, so here's his here's his first version from just a plain bird base. And you see he improved it this time by grafting on toes. So that's, um, again, great use of grafting, improving your old models. That's what it's all about. Here's from 2B. So this one... Um, it might be a little bit hard to tell, but it's, it's a knight with two swords and a grafted shield. I'm guessing these are the swords here, and then this is the big shield. So again, I, look, I like the color changes. It's a bit, a little bit messy on the shaping, but again, this is a design class. 
we care more about structures than shaping. So great job. Here's from Gyosh, again, a, another solid designer who already knows his stuff. But it looks like he grafted it on toes and the lily pads. Uh, here's his crease pattern. So you see he's got this 22 and a half base. It might not look like a base you know, but if you see on the left and right side, it's a bird base. And on the top and bottom side, it's a frog base. So it's a half bird, half frog base. And I, I guess that just let him get the proportions he wanted. And then he put these big graphs all around it so to make it. So you see now it's more graft than base, but it doesn't matter. It's still the same concept. He had these giant graphs all over the place to get um, these pleats, which he can then turn into a lily pad by spreading them out. And then these are the uh, toe, toe pleats that he turned into, um, he reverse folded to turn into toes. So I, I really like this model. This is really clever. Great job. Great job, John. Okay, so this is another one from the just the regular bird, regular traditional bases. So it's a walrus. Again, really nice color changes. I like this fin shaping. Design-wise, this is really nice. Great job, uh, boy versus paper. Uh, again, here's Chris again with uh, some more birds. This time is a half bird, half frog base, which I assume means there's legs somewhere, or at least had the potential for legs. But um, I really like this eye color change. So Chris is learning color changes too. That's really nice. And then also, again, Feather details on point, really good, really good. Another bird from a bird base, right? So birds, you can tell how useful bird bases are. And again, he says it's crappy, but again, we all gotta start somewhere, right? So I, I would say this is pretty nice. I mean, of course there's things you can fix if you try it again, but overall, great job. Uh, yeah, don't don't feel intimidated. You did a great job, Joey. Some positive feedback, nice comments, nice conversations. There are people helping him out with uh, Orihime. A little bit of improvement. So there he is, looks like he grafted on toes. So again, compared to the compared to the first version, this one's got extra details, which is always how grafting is going to work. You always want to use grafting to improve your stuff. So, great job. He actually, I like this head shaping a lot better than what I did in the ostrich video. So, great job, Joey. This one's really clever. So, this is a fish base, which is kind of like what we did with the sea lion, but um, boy versus paper again. So, he used a he actually color changed and reverse. So basically, outside reverse fold the tip and turned it into a ball, which I assume is probably stuffed which is a great shaping technique to make these uh, spherical parts. Uh, and this is very impressive. To a non-folder, they would be like, what, how'd you do that? I like this design a lot. Also the Rubik's cube. Okay, another ostrich, no more bird-based stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. And there's a secret CP in the background. Great job, Nick Yoshi. It's a little bit mushed. He says it's very mushed, as you can tell, you know, the shaping. But again, shaping's cool, but it's not the most important thing right now. Okay, a fall nest. I'm not sure what that is. I'm, I'm guessing it's like some sort of mythological thing. Then he says fish base. Um, looks more. Well, it looks more like a frog base. But regardless, I like these these uh, belly pleats. It looks nice. And then uh, you have a very clearly defined head, which is always a good aspect of human figures. And color change on the legs, which looks like it might be bleeding through or something. But regardless, uh, great design, great work, good job, Jack. It's a similar design. So these are pan pipes, which I believe are those you know the musical instruments you blow into. Yeah, that, that's very clever. Also, and then nice paintings in the background. Okay, so now we get to the box pleating video. So Fish had the first one to turn in, submit a box pleating crease pattern. So if you haven't solved these yet, um, these are spoilers, so give it a try for yourself first. So this one uh, is a good effort. Um, it was his first try, but it's actually not quite correct. Um, what you can t the way you can tell is because this flap, you've got a flap and a river around it. But it, this is basically a two unit flap, right? If we, we remove these lines here, it just becomes a two unit flap. So on the right track, not quite. Look, I think he fixed fix it up somewhere. Yeah, I forget where he posted it, but yeah, but I believe he fixed it up somewhere else later. Okay, here's from one from Jason Origami who sent me privately messaged his thing. Um, this one he actually folded. It, so this was the arbitrary tree. Um, that was just kind of random. So he actually folded it, which is a great job. He already knows how to do that. So um, looks like he got his flap lengths right. Three, two, four, etc. So uh, yeah, everything looks great. Great job, Jason. Here's Chris again. He did the he tried the bull. He found a 20 grid packing. I don't actually know what the optimal would be, but I think people were people were working on it. People were lowering it down to like 15, 16. Nevertheless, you know, it doesn't really matter what your packing is as long as you get it in. You got it in. So great job. Don't worry about grid size too much yet. Uh, we haven't learned pythons and stuff. So great job, Chris. Here's Simon. I'm pretty sure he's joking around with the 30 grid. The Oma means he's joking around, I assume. And then, as you can tell, when he's got the spherical Oma, he's really joking. We can skip that. Here's a uh, Origami DRW. All right. So you can see he used the uh, river meandering technique to pack up all the space. Now, um, again, if it's your first try, this is great. It, it's a valid tree. It completely works. 
um, even this part out down here actually you might be missing a hinge or so but it still it still works so great job for a first try very nice and then you can keep practicing as you can tell you created a new flap to take up space which you actually probably could have done you could have extended this one out horizontally but again he's correct you can actually just fill up space by creating a new flap and tucking it in and that's okay too that's a perfectly valid way um, oh bp studio here comes the bp studio so these are the pythagorean stretches so these are overlapping flaps and then the pythagorean strips allow you to get a much lower grid size this is way better than, tw than 20 so here's a 16 grid um, and again we haven't gone into pythas we haven't gone into bp studio but uh that's a thing for later anyways nice job to chris even though Pi even though bp studio is you know a computer program and it's pretty smart you still have to do stuff you still have to manipulate things for yourself so great job chris also one more thing is that he had some extra space on the sides here these gaps and so um whenever you have things like that especially if it's on the edge you can use that to uh, make color changes and you can see bodo color changed man reacted with ioma or you can also use it as as table said you can actually use that to make you know shoulder details or something like that here's chris he actually folded his crease pattern and said he actually did use the extra space to create the nice um, height of the back and again he also used a color change really proud of him for that the color change on the horns very nice and uh everything else looks great everything else on this bullet looks great he also modified the tree a bit which is perfectly fine you should be doing that i encourage you to do that all right here's bobias um so this one he actually has this blank space on the side now this doesn't look like a flap it doesn't actually have ridge creases but in essence it basically is it's basically going to be this string of pleats that are four units long and so essentially it is a flap so um, yeah don't be tricked by that it's, it's still a flap so great job bobias so here's the folded form of bobias's uh crease pattern so remember how i mentioned all these pleats here so they turn into these pleats um, and so essentially it's a flap it doesn't look like a flap there's no ridges but it still works as a flap uh, in our purposes it's legit so great job all right um so here's uh pudding man again so this is his first try uh, and he's he's spoiled it so apparently when you're on mobile the way you spoiler it is uh you type spoiler underscore before the uh file name but again if you like really can't figure it out just post it it's fine yeah so this tree so um, one thing he's actually missing here is that his rivers are not remember rivers need to go from end to end so you see this big river it actually just hits the other it's like playing slither do you know slither slither io or it's like playing snake you can't bump into other snakes so here his rivers bump and then this river bumps into itself so this this packing is not quite correct it's a great attempt but um not quite there yet and this this river also this river this tree is pretty easy to fix you can just uh, at the last moment just turn off into the edge here so just turn left into the edge this one's a little bit harder to fix and i think he went back and fixed them up later so here's people helping him out here's pudding man again he's getting closer he's uh, this time as he prevented it from bumping in by just turning up to the edge so the river is going this way and then it turns upwards so it's safe and this river is good so this one is a nice packing this is legit great job pudding man you uh, might have messed up a few times but you persevered and you have a successful crease pattern in the end so well done here is mini gloom so mini gloom actually went and folded the, the bull again it doesn't quite look like a bull yet it's uh still a little bit skinny but and we'll we'll learn techniques how to make this fatten up fatten it up so it looks more like a legit bull or ox or whatever under truck so this one looks like he's got some river here and then it meanders the rivers do go around pythagorean stretches he didn't draw it in but these two rivers merge and then that's it looks like a two unit river but it actually splits off after it hits the Pythagorean stretch and this one goes off and meanders and then these continue to the edge so this is pretty cursed but it's very clever and uh as far as i can see it's a legit solution so nice job except for the fact that it's cursed it looks like undertrox went back and fixed it up so this looks very nice now so it's just one stretch instead of two and there's no weird meanders and then, yeah no this flap is actually correct this flap on top it looks weird but um it's actually legit you can fold it and see but it will work okay so here is um the crab packing which is actually not in the homework but it's still great nonetheless so the folder made um this the pack the crab so this is, also looks like box pleating studio now i think you probably could use some python somewhere especially if you're on bp studio nonetheless it's uh definitely great good enough packed all the legs got everything needed all these center flaps will be kind of difficult to fold 
uh, and I think they might be inverted. But you'll have to be careful, you might get some unwanted color changes here. Anyway, yeah, good enough. Alright, great job. So yeah, there's a, here's how you add spoilers if you're on a desktop or, or browser, I think. But you can just click the thing, mark a spoiler. Here's the octopus. The octopus packing is super simple. If you give it a try, you'll probably find it within a few minutes. But uh, looks like this. Great. And again, um, there was a joke behind the octopus, so if you don't know it, you should join the Discord and see. I explained it somewhere. Okay, now we get into the BP, like, design your own BP section. So it looks like Jack's, Jack's been pretty ac active. So this is a um, lady riding a horse. So again, a com pretty complex figure. You're going to have a lot of flaps for you know two figures. The horse is going to have a bunch of flaps. The rider is going to have a bunch of flaps. A 16 by 16 grid means your flaps are going to be kind of small. It's going to be hard to shape, but um, it's pretty good for a first attempt. I can see there's some hair shaping going on, and you can definitely tell that there's a four-legged creature with a tail and stuff. So not bad, not bad, actually, yeah really complex thing all right and then this this knight so again also 16 by 16 grid with a lot of flaps it's going to mean that you're going to have small flaps but uh nevertheless some good chest plate shaping you can tell there's some helmet shaping going on the sword is a little small so if that's if you're going to go refold it that's one thing i suggest to make the sword a little bit bigger other than that great job with uh you did looks like you did the packing and the tree uh, beginning to end so great job on that Alrighty then. Oh, you can tell that a lot of people went above and beyond in the homework submissions, but don't be intimidating. You know, so a lot of these people already know how to design, so already have some experience. Yeah, and a lot of people have already done what we learned in this video. Um, but if folding the packing was something that's new to you, so you just learned how to turn it into a crease pattern, that's something you should do for homework. If you did a packing from uh, last episode's packing homework, I encourage you to fold it if you haven't already. And then you can go ahead and post it in here in the homework submissions channel. And next time I film a video, I'll review them, all right? So great job, everyone. I'm really excited to see that all of you guys are participating and helping each other out on the homework channel, which is great. It makes me happy to see these. So thank you guys. Thanks for participating, and I'll see you next time.